Today on Tactical Accountants, we're going to be taking a look at, or rather through, the IRA RH25 Thermal Monocular. This device has quickly established a reputation as one of the best do-it-all thermal devices on the market, meaning it can be used handheld, helmet mounted, standalone weapon mounted, and even as a clip-on in front of your daytime optic. With a 640 resolution thermal sensor, the RH25's image quality is highly praised on YouTube and in other places, but one thing I noticed when I was researching this device prior to purchasing it, as one should when you see what this costs, but we'll discuss that later, is that even though the RH25 has onboard recording and it's very easy to export the footage to your smartphone wirelessly even, it seems like most video reviews of the RH25 show more of the device as it actually looks than footage shot from it. So I'm going to set out to rectify that somewhat today. So the next 15 minutes or so are going to be all footage with my initial thoughts and just a voiceover. Before that, two quick things. The RH25 only comes in tan on the US market. There is a black international version we might discuss a bit later. But compared to Magpul standard FDE color, which we have in this grip and this stock here, you can see the tan is a perfect match if you care about that sort of thing. I should mention also, because I could see it being asked, the front cap I have on my RH25 is from Butler Creek. It's number 02A. I highly recommend it because it is much easier to use and less flimsy than the factory rubber cap, which you see here I've removed. And then it also makes for much more repeatable, reliable turning of the focus ring. The focus turns along with the cap. I'm also going to weigh the RH25 on camera, as we do on Tactical Accountants. Standalone, it is just under 13 ounces, meaning without the hardware to either helmet mount it or weapon mount it, this would be just a device in handheld configuration. But without further ado, let's get to the footage. Starting with the best footage of all, because this is the best dog in the world, and I'll fight you if you disagree. Just look at the detail on his pores by his whiskers there. That's what the RH25 can do when properly focused. It's very impressive to see. He's excited because he's going to his favorite place in the world, a local forest reserve where the lady and I regularly take him that has an extremely large, extremely active deer population, and they're not really afraid of people. So you can see them up close. You'll see some here as I pan the RH25. I should mention, because this is a thermal device and is thus very popular with hunters, uh, hog hunters, coyote hunters that have to hunt at night, there's quite a bit of footage from the RH25 on YouTube that shows animals getting shot. Um, this is not going to be like that. So you're going to see a lot of deer in this video, but you're not going to see any hunting. So let that be the opposite of a trigger warning. Nothing wrong with thermal hunting, by the way. You see a plane here with the heat coming out of the engines. It's very cool because there is a major airport near this forest preserve. As we see some more deer hiding in the thick woods there. The footage you're going to see is very impressive, but I wanted to put a disclaimer here. You're probably watching this on a smartphone or on a TV. And so it's filling the entire screen. It's important to remember, however, that the RH25 is a digital device, meaning that you're going to be looking at a much smaller screen when you're actually using it. So if you're coming from night vision, like this PVS 14 here, night vision is like a hollow magical tube because it's analog. So you look through it and it doesn't look like you're looking through a screen because you're not. Whereas comparing that to the RH25 in use, you'll see in this clip here, you are in fact looking at a screen that's set an inch or two from your eye. So the image to your naked eye is gonna be much smaller relative to something like a PBS 14. This is handheld mode, which is slightly rounded. We're gonna to switch to clip on mode, which brings it down from slight magnification of 1.3 or 1.5 X to one X. We're gonna discuss clip on mode in proper detail in the next video because I haven't had a real chance to try it, but you could see here a photo through a LPVO at around 2X, a 4X ACOG, and finally a 5X long distance scope at its minimum magnification. It's very impressive and the RH25 ends up 
giving you that nice big eye box more as a clip on than as a standalone device. But again, we'll discuss that in a different video. This is the helmet mode, which looks just like the clip on mode, but is automatically triggered when you turn the device upside down. And then finally, going back to handheld mode, but activating the onboard reticle that can be zeroed. So this is if you want to use your RH25 as a standalone thermal optic. You have different reticle colors, designs. I have the green crosshair here with hash marks. And this is the digital zoom from 1x to 2x up to 4x. It's interesting to note that this next clip with the little uh, red addition symbol in the middle, this is what it looks like when you record through the reticle enabled mode. You don't see the reticle that you actually see with your eye. This is what their device puts in the recording instead of the reticle you choose. As we see another plane coming in to land there, engines glowing on red hot mode. Moving on to color palettes, we have color for Predator vibes. Dylan! You son of a bitch! R.I.P. to Carl Weathers, of course. This is Red Hot, which I'm partial to. You may have noticed already. Black Hot. Check out the raccoon moving in the background there. That's how sensitive the RH25 is. Finally, White Hot. In researching it, it seems White Hot and Black Hot are the most popular. Uh, I happen to like the Red Hot, but you can see all the palettes here. Spook those deer. That's how close they were without knowing I was crouching recording them. With Red Hot, what I like, if you look at the heat being reflected on those windows there, it disappears when a car drives by and the heat of the brakes and the exhaust, I guess, recalibrate the unit. So it's all relative. And the items of interest seem to pretty reliably be shown in red. Here we see Red Hot in an urban setting. Important to remember that thermal devices can't look through glass, so all the glass looks opaque. But panning around, anything of interest, you see the heat on the window, but those people are probably 100 yards away. They instantly jump out. Down the block, you'll see a car that was recently parked with the exhaust and tires, in fact, still glowing red hot, as well as a person walking there, I estimate, at least 100 yards away. And then the RH25 will even remind you when to pick up after your dog. It's pretty sensitive. This is a good use case for Black Hot. It hasn't been my favorite color palette yet, but we see here looking at these deer across the little stream. It looks very impressive on Black Hot here. The tree line you see here as I sneak around behind it is around 100 yards away. I'm probably another five or 10 yards in the bushes or trees there you can instantly make out that a person is slinking around, even if just the head is exposed like that. On red hot, it absolutely glows and makes itself visible to the naked eye as a deer comes here to photobomb me. I don't know why I'm turning around there. I guess I got lost in the woods. Vincent, I'm on the intercom. But going in, even deeper. The reason I'm showing this, I'm trying to be somewhat scientific about it, is there was a video comparison I watched uh, right before I bought this device. I'm not going to link to it or even name drop it because I'm not about calling people out like that. But basically, it was a comparison of the RH25 and two other thermal devices. And the conclusion the video maker made was that the RH25 is useless basically beyond 75 yards if you're going to try to positively ID what you're shooting at. As we see here, people walking around 100 yards away through the woods, I would highly disagree with that. At 100 yards, you're easily able to make out details, even fine details of somebody moving around. You see this other deer scampering 100 yards away. As I come back into the shot, not quite as hidden. I would say at 100 yards, you'll probably agree, you could easily make out, if it's a person with ill intent, I think you could easily make out a rifle being held at this distance and focus in on a, on a head area even. That's how sensitive it is. 
I had my rangefinder with me this day. So this individual walking on the path is around 150 yards away. Again, you could see there the glowing red hot of the individual hands. Were that person holding a weapon, I think we'd be able to distinguish that from this footage. These deer also around 150 to 175 yards away. You can make out the individual legs as they walk. I think it would be pretty easy to distinguish them at this distance, a deer from a coyote, from a person, obviously, especially clipped on in front of a magnified optic. Uh, this is still well within the RH-25's wheelhouse. This person here, this is the furthest footage I'm gonna show, somewhere around 275 to 300 yards. I had my rangefinder with me. Here, I think you can really see why I like red hot versus black hot or some of the other color palettes, red hot immediately draws your eye to the living thing that far away. Polar end of the spectrum with the device focused, we see some more good doggos. This is just some fun footage, but it shows how clearly the RH-25 records. Even driving, obviously focusing on the road, eyes straight ahead, but if you aim this device out a window, driving by a forest, you can even see deer well within the tree line. It's impressively sensitive. Right away, you can pick up pretty much anything living in an environment like this. I should mention, it is still winter in the Midwest, so this footage is all at most 50 degrees outside stands to reason that as it gets warmer ambient temperature the device would not do as well picking up body heat relative to ambient heat but this is what we have to work with so far and so far i'm impressed some more footage comparing the color palettes this maybe is an argument against red hot this is shot during the daytime and you could see some of the ambient light from the sun heating trees and branches on the ground. We can still make out those deer there, but you could argue, I suppose, that red hot is too much clutter. This is the color. This is white hot. Seems to be most people's favorite color palette. Black hot. In this footage, I would say white hot looks the best. And we're going to pan back. White hot here, again, looks like high resolution, high quality footage from a regular camera that has some kind of high contrast filter to me, which is high praise for the image quality of this device. Moving back to a very urban use case. Here we have the Lake Michigan lakefront with an unknown individual there, probably 200 yards away. You can easily make out. Panning to some ducks and the downtown Chicago skyline as urban as it gets but this being downtown chicago we're gonna go right back to the unknown hooded individual approaching us because that is the kind of situational awareness you need in chicago not to get killed i'm mostly joking but crime has gotten a lot more randomized here in terms of where it happens so you got to be aware and this is as good a time as any to segue into price because for those who don't know i and my fellow tactical accountant continue to reside in illinois why? 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 I know, I ask myself that question every day. Why are we still here? Not least of which because there is an assault weapons ban on the books for the last year and change. And that means essentially no new magazine fed semi auto rifles for us for the foreseeable future. The only silver lining of that is it has allowed me to save up for the RH 25 and it has taken some saving up. The IRA RH25 MSRP right now, because I checked, is $5,500, which it pains me just to say that. I should say right off the bat, I paid over $1,000 less than that. There are vendors that will get you closer to $4,000 on the US version, but you might have to do the um, email me for best price thing or um, add to cart for best price, just check different vendors with a five-year US warranty. And the reason I say that, it's worth saying, 
The international version of the RH25 is called the P-Falcon 640. In the past, it seems like a lot of guys have tried to save money on this device by going for the international P-Falcon. The problem is that the main supplier for them in the US, which was Cold Harbor Supply in Canada, they will no longer ship here. I guess IRA USA doesn't want the international version taking sales away from the RH25. More to the point, I reached out to IRA USA myself and asked them, would they work on the P Falcon period in the US? They told me they would not. So it's not even a warranty question. They will not service the international one. These seem to be reliable. People seem to be happy with the international ones in the US. I'm just letting you know why I went with the premium US warranty version, just for my peace of mind since it is a US device. In terms of competitive options, as far as I know, the only devices out there that can meet or exceed the RH25's capabilities as a do-it-all handheld lightweight device are the Trijicon Ski IR and the Pixels on Target Voodoo S. Both of those devices MSRP for around fifteen dollars to $16,000. So it goes without saying they're in a completely different price league that makes them unaffordable to most people, myself included. Not to say that the RH25 isn't still extremely expensive because it is, but it should tell you how much this thing is punching above its weight. The elephant in the room there, um, no surprise, it's because the RH25 comes from a Chinese company. It's a Chinese thermal core. So don't tell me about China. I know China. That's unfortunate. We all wish we could buy only US made, but in this case, uh, the alternative for US made is just not affordable for myself. The AGM Sting IR is a lower priced alternative to the RH25, especially if you opt for the 384 resolution version instead of the 640. I believe they both use IRA cores in fact, so unfortunately still Chinese components. The problem with the Sting IR is it's only rated for 556 recoil compared to 300 wind mag uh, on the RH25 all the way up to 50 BMG if you use the included recoil reducing mount. The Sting IR also does not offer onboard recording, which was a big negative for me. You can see from this video, I certainly appreciate the onboard recording from the RH25, and I intend to use it going forward, visiting the Smokies and other places that would make for cool wildlife spotting. In terms of the 640 Sting IR, all of the limited footage I've seen from it, unfortunately, just does not look as crisp and sharp as the 640 footage from the RH25. I should put a shout out here also. If you're researching this thing like I did, there are videos on YouTube. There is a 15 or 20 page thread on ARF forum, as well as one on Sniper's Hide. And between all the sources, there is a individual, uh, I don't know if French is his real name, but French is in his username everywhere. And he is by far the best source of information on this unit. So shout out to Mr. French. <laughs> You met my friend, Mr. French, the other night. So that's about it. Uh, closing out this video with some last footage of deer, and that should be my cue to justify why I bought the RH25. I'm going to splice in one last piece of footage to show how well deer can camouflage in a wooded environment, even during the daylight, even standing upright, probably 50 yards away. I deer hunt once a year, and I told myself after this last year, not gonna get into the details, but in terms of tracking uh, a deer I took a shot at in last light, the anxiety that I personally feel and the guilty conscience, the thought of not being able to find a wounded animal or being able to harvest the meat of a life I took uh, it's just not something I can deal with. And since I'm going to keep eating meat, uh, I told myself I got to man up and get a thermal. And for once, I did the buy once, cry once thing and got the option that seems to be the one to get where it's something slightly cheaper. And I'm still justifying it to myself clearly, but I hope this footage was useful to anybody else in the same boat thinking about buying the RH25. Happy to answer any questions in the comments. And like I said, there is another video coming focusing just on clip-on capability. That's it, guys. Take care. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you next time.